Hey. Make some. Gonna make some glass marbles in a second. Probably just one. Just like the usual glass marble demonstration. This time. I don't know. It'll be the same. <laughs> I'm gonna tidy up. I was making some bunch of oh, let's get things set up away or just me. Here we go. I was making some monster eye marbles. These were some of those twisted canes I made. For decorating. A lot of really nice ones come out this week. Did blue base, did dark blue base. Gonna do some teal and gonna do some light green later this week. There's like the teal I was ready to do. Batch. I usually do like four or five before I sit down and make those. Today I'm gonna make a what I call an enamel marble. It's gonna use enamel powders. I'll use some light colors. Here's a pale purple. Here is a white. There's some colors on top, but that's just a little dusting from sitting up on the shelf and getting jostled. I'm gonna use some blue aventurine, sparkly copper dust suspended in a blue glass. And then I'm also going to use some regular aventurine, copper dust, and clear. And this is just um, turned into frit. Let's see, can you see what it looks like? One millimeter frit. That's my favorite size to work with in marbles. If you go much smaller than that, it's easy to uh, burn it and then it doesn't look as sparkly. So you need to have, it's got to have a little bit of its own mass. Um, but if you end up using pieces that are too big, that's not appropriate to the size of the marbles that uh, I'm usually making. So this will be great. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a core of the marble. I'm going to decorate it in the enamel powder. Then I'm going to shape it into four-sided cylinder. I'm going to uh, pick up uh, the venturing on two of the panels or two of those sides. Then I'm going to add a little bit of transparent color over top. I'll probably do a little cobalt and a little bit of aqua and then the rest will all be clear. I'm using just some recycled blue old handles for the core of the marble. And then I'll use some very nice clear, uh, some larger clear, a nice um, relatively bubble-free rod to do swipe gathers over the enamel, aventurine, and transparent color lines that I've laid down. So let's get started. I'm going to get, grab my eyewear. This filters out sodium flare and uh, UV and infrared radiation that can damage your eyes. I have a over the lens of my camera, I have a filter just like that so that you can see the colors much like I'm seeing them. Because you're seeing them flat <coughs> um, without binocular vision, um, that is a, it's not quite the same, but it's pretty close. I really like the, the, the new filter that we've got on the camera right now. Um, I wish I could take it off and put it on, but I've got it taped on for the moment because uh, it's kind of a makeshift feel. I wonder if I've got, I've made several of the filters. It'd be nice if I had one that I kept to show you. And I don't know where I put the other one. It's probably on another camera. Um, so for now, let's get going. I've got a couple of little shorts so the first thing I'll do, and I do this quite a bit, is heating the ends of some shorter rods to fuse them together 
so that you're not burning yourself. And then this has to sit aside for a little bit so you don't accidentally touch that middle hot portion. So I, I melted the ends of the rod, put them together, and I'm gonna roll some of that bit that's protruding out. And then I'm going to pull on it slightly out this way and out this way as I'm rotating it to try to straighten it and I broke it. <laughs> <laughs> I, let it, I let it sit too long because I was talking to you guys. Let's try it again. And this doesn't, you know, whether it's ugly or not, it's not a deal because it's just going to get melted into the core of our marble. So I'm turning it and I'm pulling it. You can also put it perpendicular to the ground. And now you see I'm, I'm rotating it and it looks relatively straight. If it's bent, um, they're on slightly different axis, then um, it's going to be difficult to work. So see, I'm rotating this, and the axis is pretty straight. So that's going to be nice for us to work with as we melt all these things together. Here's another little short handle piece, and another one here. I like to use everything up uh, if I can. Sometimes if things are on my bench too long, then I find them a distraction where they start building up. And so I will clean those off and put them aside. Oh, look, I'm using another group. And I did a terrible, terrible job. Oh no, I ruined it. It will never melt into the core, which I'm going to cover up with enamel powder. <laughs> but all the little bits of color from my marbles. Oops. I say it like I made a lot of I guess I better use my tweezers. A lot of these little bits that come off the end of the marble. I have a lot of nice color in them. And uh, generally what I'll do is I'll mix those up into a, st a stringer, pull them out, and mix the color so it's it's uniform. Pull it out. And then I have some nice threads to decorate beads or marbles or make flowers. That's great. And I love having a new color, a unique color. Um, if I find the color comes out ugly, I can always roll it back into a brown color or something like that. Or uh, black, generally not, because uh, black you want to be dense and uh, not rarefy out. Um, man, I swore I wasn't going to talk a bunch of technical crap today, so let's stop that and let's get on to our core. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to melt these rods together, melt the ends, touch them together. I'm going to start rotating them, and then I'll change the angle of them so that the gob that's connecting them rolls back down onto the rod and gets bigger. Let's we'll see how that happens in a minute. We'll get a, a decent sized gap, and then we'll start coating it in enamel powder, which is super, super fun. And I have a vent hood above me. In fact, all my glass blowing that I'm doing right here is inside of a giant vent hood. And if, we, if I ever stop talking, you can hear the vents going. But that's not going to happen. <laughs> okay, I'll try to stop talking for like 10 seconds. got my gather started. Did you hear the fan in the background? It's me sniffing. <laughs> so I got my gather going. When it's hot, then I'll, I'll roll it so it picks up more glass. I broke that. <laughs> it's just a hell of a day. <laughs> All right, so let's look at this gather. We'll let it cool down a little bit. I'll have to go back and reheat it. But you can see the rods are light blue. This is the recycled stuff that I pull. And so whenever I'm just building mass that's all gonna get covered up with something opaque, it's a 
great opportunity to use some of this. You can see there's bubbles and there streaks. Sorry. We'll hide it. Be fine. I use uh, some of this for cores of beads to um, this light blue actually works great for making neon tetras, which I mean <laughs> I dread <drinking> this summer. <laughs> I was gonna make these little paperweight things that look like coral reefs with little tiny fish poking out of them for uh it doesn't matter. <laughs> when in doubt, they all become earrings. All right, my gather is getting close to the right size. Keep rolling it together. Nice to give this glass another chance to become something. like if I was doing glass blowing this dirty glass would not be something that you'd want to use it would have a different stiffness um, and viscosity than the surrounding glass you'd use I am looking forward to having some clean glass Hello. Soon. I got some equipment I have to fix before I get back to that. And hopefully, going to add in some natural gas uh, pipe heaters and uh, glory hole. Cool. Alright, there's my gather. It's a little bit wiggity and wonky. We'll straighten it out, and uh, now that the temperature is fairly even, I'm going to roll it on my marver plate, and I'm going to give it a little help with my little mini paddle marver to make it a cylinder. And the cylinder is going to be the nice shape that we're going to use to pick up our enamel powder. And I just uh, pushed on this a little bit too aggressively. Normally when you marble glass, you're just using gravity and rolling it back and forth in your marble plate. The one I have next to me is a graphite marble plate. Pulls heat out relatively quickly, quicker than a, a steel marble plate. Um, generally because for lamp working, you're working to your temperature extremes much quickly, much more quickly. And um, so it's nice to be able to cool something down fast and localized. And so graphite is a great tool for that. Um, glass blowing is more about being even and leaving heat in longer, which is uh, also nice to do, also nice working that way. Um, for this particular way, I'm doing it my work style. And you can see, because of my initial error, my punty rod is off center of this cylinder, and I don't like that. So, I'm going to just take a couple seconds and heat up this stainless steel punty rod handle for glass. And I'm going to heat up the glass where it's going to attach, and join those together, get it centered. And then I'll get rid of this crooked end. And I can clean up that the end of that cylinder a little nicer, too. I should show you the end of these punty rods. These are reaching the end of their useful life. Um, and I'm going to be filing them down. They're long enough that I can, I can fix them and use them again. Because they're... they're can see they've got extra length on the back. It's nice to have some extra length on the back for counterbalancing, but uh, because I'm working in my fumigoid, I don't want them to be too long because I don't want them to run. If I'm doing it on the other side, I don't want them to run into the wall of the fumigoid. So, let's 
So I'm just improving my cylinder shape, and I'll show you that in just a minute. Actually, just a few seconds. So here's that punky rod. You can see it's almost worn down to a point. Let's dry it off. You'll see it's like hairy and cracked and carbony. Get that in focus. So, I will uh, run those on my belt sander to reshape them. Alright, let's go back, fix this cylinder. It's kind of pretty on its own. That light blue glass, little bubbles in there. Alright, so. Cylinder shape's good now. I'm ready to go in and grab my enamel powder. I'm going to grab mostly white. And then um, once I have it evenly covered with white, I'm going to put some panels on the cylinder. I'm going to shape it into a squarish rectangle cylinder. And each of those flat areas I'll refer to as a panel. And I'll decorate each panel. I'll leave one unadorned, just white contrast. One uh, opposite the white, I'm going to make purple, light purple. And then on the other two, going a little bit off frame because that's my enamel powders off to the side here because I, I don't want to accidentally bump it. I want it to be away from my face too while <laughs> I'm doing doing the pickup. Even though I have it here moving across it. Moving towards me. Alright, so I picked up some white. Looks pretty nice. You can kind of see it's got some show through to the back. Even though I picked up several layers, I'm gonna pick up one more pick up a little bit better too now that it's already grabbed some. I want to grab onto more of itself. No, I'm just melting that enamel powder in. And now I'm going to gently shape it. See, it's round now. You can look through because it's clear. Let's see. That was fun. <laughs> Didn't do anything. <laughs> All right, back to work. Let's shape this into a square cylinder. What's the mathematical word for that? Anyone? Anyone? So, I don't want to try to get the shape all at once. I'm going to just start introducing some flat spots. And then as I get a spot a little bit flat, then that gives me a reference point to turn it 90 degrees and flatten that area. And then once I have my reference points in place, then I will keep pressing it until I get a nice square. That's square enough. I don't need the corner sharp. Let's heat it back up. You can see I've got panels. I'm going to decorate those panels. Let's do our first pickup, that purple enamel. Melt it in. And there we are. Purple. I'm going to put a stripe of transparent color along that. Now, on the ones next to the purple, we're going to pick up blue aventurine. Let's do that now. There it is. That's a good enough pickup for me for this this design. Um, I want there to be show through. I want it to seem uh, even but naturally distributed. 
there's the regular event screen. It's not those. Now I'm going to start heating up my transparent aqua. That's my first transparent color. And this aqua is going to go down the center of the purple enamel. It can go anywhere. It could go over the event tree even. That would look cool. Let's, we won't do that today, but whatever strikes you, you know, we're just mushing stuff together, essentially. And so I get a little swipe gather of that aqua right there. The slug. I'll we'll heat up the cobalt blue. Everyone's favorite color. Scientifically proven that if you uh, have something that's not turning out, you can always add cobalt blue to it and assure its future sale. Is that true? Got our panels decorated. We've got a little bit of transparent color on there. I'm just going to melt everything in, get evened up, and then I'm going to roll it back out into a regular cylinder. I don't want it to get too long on me, so I'm going to compress it. Yeah, that's right, Jim. The title of my book. If you can't make it good, make it big. If you can't make it big, make it blue. <laughs> so, coming on to nicer weather, and I'm going to try to start, depending on how things go in the real world, get some actual Um, demos you can come to and watch and do some shopping hopefully um, so I'm shooting for May nicer weather Have some dogs or something we'll see I guess how things develop alright we're going to use this medium sized clear rod and case the rest of this marble the first one's going to take a bit, but once we get start this rod melting, we're going to be able to do a, a lot of clear swipe gathers on this marble. Thanks everyone for joining me today. And since it is just me in here, so things may scroll by and I may not see them. because I'm focused on something that's a foot from my face and my phone is farther away, so I have to pause and refocus my eyes to read things, and if I get involved, I may not see what you're saying, so I'll go back after and immediately answer questions if I've missed anything. Now you can see I'm getting this, getting the gather on there. Basically, that's just, the rod end is melted. That's what I'm calling a gather. And then I'm going to touch on one end the gather of my cylinder and swipe down, leaving a trail of clear glass. I want this to be hot. I want this to be warm, but not hot enough that I'm going to smear it. So let's do touch and wipe and pull away. I have a clear covering over a portion of my cylinder, which will become my marble. Now we're going to, this, this half, half of a gather is already formed, so another one's going to form right away. And I'm going to put another gather right next to my first one, going in the other direction. There's my second gather. And 
since I'm wiping them, I'm pushing any air that might be in there out. So you can see between my two swipe gathers, there's no air trap. I mean, there might be a tiny. I don't know. <laughs> we got most of it out of there. That's fine. Whatever works for you. Some people like bubbles. I like bubbles generally. I like the bubbles to be in the designs where I put bubbles in there. And no bubbles to be in there when I don't want them. Now, on this rod, you can see there's a bubble. Let's let it focus. There it is. is that it? Anyway, there's a bubble in that rod. I don't want to wipe that into my marble. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep this gather back up. There's the bubble. Let's pick it out before it becomes part of our marble. So, I'm going to get three hands here and keep things moving and grab that bubble out. And get back here. Ooh, I got it. See? It's gone. <laughs> got lips. <laughs> it's easier to do if you're not talking at the same time, I think. But... Whatever. This is good, good practice for me too. I have another thing going. All right. So back to our gathers. Let's go one more there. And it looks like we'll need about three or four more. Let's see if we can do those in fairly rapid succession. Then we'll start adding some motion to our marble design. See, it's in lines here. Pretty static. So right, we'll add a twist. Motion. There's a couple of different ways that I you can twist a marble. Um, you can do it just in one direction. You can do um, like a chevron or a wigwag, or you can change the axis of rotation. Um, you can just get in there, and dig around, and uh, mess up the design, make it look. Um, <laughs> <laughs> make it look um, like more random and natural like a disaster I love that captured static forever I got bubbles in the end of my rod again some hot air coming out of my mouth blah, blah, blah. Oh no! <laughs> oh. <laughs> Alright, I need two more gathers. We're doing a definitely B minus work here. <laughs> no, it's fine. I'm almost done. One more gather. Covering that one thin spot. There might be some enamel showing through. Really hard to see uh, in the two dimensional camera image. Maybe you can see it if it's in motion. It's like right there. Rotating out of frame now. We'll get one more on there. Alright, so everything is cased. Cased meaning covered and clear. And what I'm going to do now is on this unattached end here, I'm going to bend all this clear over the end. Just drag it a little bit over the edge. Because I have sort of something in the design of the marble, in the shape of it, that I don't want to come out in the design. I want the surface to be relatively even underneath the layer of clear. As of right now, it's kind of a medium thickness over the surface of the cylinder, but then it stops, ends at the, the end of the cylinder there. So 
this is just in aid of the, the future of this marble doing what I want. This is an intermediary step that I've discovered is helpful. So I've swipe gathered edge, and now I'm just going to take my tweezers or tongs or pick or whatever you have, and what I'm doing is I'm just persuading the glass over that edge. And you can see I've dragged it here it stops. And here I've pulled it over the edge. That's all. Just a little, a little something. Now I'm going to switch the handle from this side to this side. And then do that same persuasion. And then I will add my twist. This is going to be just a straight One direction twist marble. So that's a great place to start, you know, when you're first uh, doing some glass work. Do one, one thing. Get that right a bunch of times. Just like anything artistic or craft oriented. Then, when you get that first thing, you can add something else. Hopefully something else that you've sort of test-proven as well. You know, it's taking one technique that you've worked on and another that you've worked on and then put them together and work on their merging. Rather than taking one you've worked on and one you, that's a stranger to you and trying to do it, then you can all... You, really only have access to one half of what you could be experimenting with on that technique if, you, if you're sandwiching it into something that's already part of the project. So perfect the separate elements, then bring them together, then perfect the union of those elements. When I say perfect, I mean not mess it up too badly. <laughs> so as I was talking, I pulled the glass over this other end, and now you can see it looks kind of like um, a melon. Pulled it from a cylinder to a little poignant on the ends. Now I'm going to reattach this handle, this punty rod, to here, reestablishing a twisting axis. So this is something that you can do in lamp work and smaller scale stuff, which is very nice to have access to. I can control the heat from my ends into the middle of the piece. Rather than trying to put this in a a more classic glass blowing glory hole where I'm heating the end but then the pipe has to stay cool enough so that it's not falling off the pipe. Here I can work this whole piece of glass hotter, twisting it more, it even. I mean and you can you can work very hot to glass blowing and get things to really twist and move and pull out fine. I just say that as kind of a rough comparison. Alright, so I put my twist in already. Looks good. Now I'm going to detach this handle that I just put on to add the twist. And I'm going to clean up that end and get that all the lines and the spirals and the enamel colors. Right now, they don't all come to the end. You can see they sort of spiral out. What I want to do is I want to come back a little bit farther in and I'm going to define a, a cut line, a jack line on this and then pinch it down 
or jack it down until it's small and then I'll tap it off. So right now I'm just defining the line that I want to start pinching on. And now I know I've got it perpendicular to the axis and I can crimp it down and I'm adding a little bit of twist to the end as I go and it's 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 narrowing down that little bit. I'm chilling it with my jacks scissors in this case and then it, I'm chilling it and I'm just going to tap it off. And I didn't even have to tap it off, it just broke right off. I was ready for it too. I could feel it. And so now we look at the end and everything is spiraling down to a point. That is some marble happiness right there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to improve the shape of this unattached half of the marble into a, more of a sphere. <laughs> Someone said using the using gravity or, or working against gravity is, is part of the fun of offhand glasswork and I would say yes it is. Swinging around the pipe and changing the angle and the spin and stuff like that. It's another whole aspect that's very fun. And I'm, I'm doing the same thing here on a smaller scale. I'm changing this, changing this, changing this heat, outer cooler. You do see people who are, um, if you're if they're making you know something that has a spin or rotation or needs to be stabilized, they'll put another handle on it from the, the non-gaffer side, the assistant side. Gaffer meaning the person who's in charge of the work, whatever's being made at the time. All right, now I need a marble mold. I'm going to use some hemispherical graphite molds. I'm going to go just tweak that shape to being a little more spherical. I want to mash it because I don't want to. I don't want to change the design. So. I'm, I'm moving it, but I'm also continuing to rotate it. I'm letting it fall kind of into the mold using gravity. And I'm turning it. I am using a little bit of pressure, not immediately. First thing I'm going to do is, you know, sort of like test. How is the glass moving? Am I ready to press down on it? I'll give a little pressure more and more as I go. And it gives less and less as you go. So it's like a force curve. You can only go so far because you don't want to break this connection. You get the feel right away. How much is, you know, what's working in the glass and what's too much work for the glass. Like any tool, you know, you, uh, are you letting the tool do the work, or are you <laughs> pressing down harder and thinking that's going to get it done? You know, famous Dremel tool last words. How many Dremel tools did you destroy before you figured it out? <laughs> someone was to see me using the drum tool, they'd be like, man, this guy is so boring. Look at how slow he's going. He's not pushing down on that at all. And I'm like, precise. <laughs> Which is nice. Satisfying when things do what you want. Although not as satisfying if it's taking forever. 
All right, so this end is still what I would call loose. <coughs> Excuse me, it's drying here. Um, so I'm going to go back a little bit farther down and do the same thing I did last time, back to where all the colors are on the surface of the marble and pull them down to a point from there. Get a nice, an end that looks nice, so it's not looking into the core of the marble, but it's everything is evenly distributed, and the twist is even. Sometimes those little nubs are, they've got a little color in them there. Very cool looking. Sometimes if I'm doing like a bunch of the same marble over and over again, I'll have a bunch of those little nubs that look the same. And so, people like to use those for crafts. Um, you can melt them flat, make some earrings out of them, done some of that. I love making earrings out of all the little tiny glass blowing stuff. It's very satisfying. Alright, so I messed up my shape a little bit, so I'm just heating the whole marble. I'm going to go into graphite molds and just like get this a little more spherical. And since the backside's spherical, I did that first improvement of the spherical shape. Now that I can work on this side, I'm actually going to get like 80% of the marble really, really spherical. And this unattached side is going to be, I'm going to basically have it finished. I just have to go back to that initial side again and tidy it up. Have a little roll around the marble walls and see where we're at. So it's looking pretty good. This is nice. So it comes to a point. Let's heat it back up. The surface is ripply. The surface chilled on the graphite, but the insides were still hot. So I'll smooth out the surface, and I still do have some improvement of the shape. But you can see it's not perfectly spherical. The stripes are pretty nice and even, which is it's my goal for this marble. Simple one-way twist. That's like very classic glass-blowing marble. And we're doing it torch work style, which is the mini version but it takes twice as long, or longer. But, you know, therein lies the difference between lamp working and glass blowing. There's a uh, different feel for the work. Both are fun, both are cool. For people doing the work, anyway, I'm going to run through a cherry wood mold on this. So, cherry wood now. I'm just going to go in one of the holes. Rotate. You can see it continues to spin. So it's very, it's nice and sweet. I just use the rim of those drill outs and that flat paddle a couple seconds in each one rather than trying to do all of my cooling and shaping of the marble in one portion of the hole that's those paddles last longer like some if you watch people doing big stuff and they're using um, 
uh, wood paddles. A lot of times you'll see them momentarily burst into flame. Um, that's an indicator. Some people like that. Some people don't like it to let it get that far. They'd rather have it smoke and not burst into flame. Some people really get a kick out of that tactile indicator, and that's part of the experience, part of the process. That's a personal preference. I like to preserve my tools um, as long as possible. So I take a, an extra second or two here and there just to make sure that I'm not catching this shit on fire. <laughs> Although sometimes you just gotta catch stuff on fire. <laughs> when I was first uh, first started making marbles, going to the marble show. I always was like, let's put more detail in it, make it smaller, and nah, be really cool. And then everyone at the show was like, oh, well, you're making new marbles, you should make it bigger, make it bigger, 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 bigger. And I was like, no. <laughs> that's not, that's more to carry. Because I was like, coming from the, the stained glass, you know, windows and lamps and stuff like that. It's like, it's so nice not to have to carry all these windows and lamps, carry just the small stuff. I'm not going to start making the marbles bigger and bigger. I like a tiny. It's all the details in there. Working big is fun too. I hope to do some of that this summer. So I can get my equipment. Up. I still end up making marbles, but I haven't. I didn't make any bases this year because I was doing mostly um, I had some other projects, and there's no farmers market this year, this past year. So usually the farmers market is great for people appreciating my little vases. So, very nicely. Yeah. Makes me happy and makes my customers happy. So. Let's get this on the cherry wood panel again. That pass. Let's get this. my marble. It is done. I just have to get it into the kneeling oven. So what I'm going to do is... Uh, is this one? Nope. See it entering. Alright, so I'm going to put it onto a flame-proof tile and a little divot. Use my jacks, which are cooled down, to chill the attachment point of that last glass punty. Cap it off. Comes right off. <laughs> comes right off. That's frustrating though when you're <laughs> the first couple hundred times. <laughs> now I'm using my torch to melt that last little attachment point, make it smooth, letting heating that small area so it pulls in. It's smooth. Since I'm heating like just a tiny area, I'm like really blazing the flame on it and I'm backing off. I'm really blazing it because I don't want to oxidize the surface of the glass. Now I'm going to pick up these coat hanger bent marble tweezers. And I'm going to heat them up to orange and let them go to black. And then I'm going to pick up my marble. Careful not to touch the area that I just had the torch blazing away on. And 
done it. I'm going to go transfer it to the annealing oven, and I'll be right back. And I'll tell you all about annealing. Oh, my God. Let's talk about it for hours. No, it's not that exciting. Um, <laughs> the glass just needs to be maintained at that point where it's a solid. It almost will go to a liquid, but you don't want it to be moving. So, at about 960 degrees, bond angles can all correct themselves. This internal stress can come out of the glass, and that's annealing. It needs to be like that for... Uh, I'd say one hour per quarter inch of thickness. This is about a one inch marble. I usually anneal my marbles for about two hours at this size. Um, if I start getting over an inch and a sixteenth, then I start lengthening the time. But this is this was about a one inch, one and sixteenth marble, so that two hours should be fine. Then I ramp down the temperature um, over a period of another two hours, and uh, then turn it off once it gets uh, down to about five hundred. And then tomorrow, you come out and you look at your marbles. It's a magical experience. And I gotta tell you, that never gets old. You know, you make your uh, beads or your vases or your tumblers or your marbles, and going to see your work the next day or even later that day, sometimes, you know, you're like, it's still like 200 degrees, and you're like, let's look at it, get it out of here. I wanna play with it. <laughs> it's awesome. Sometimes I wait. I'm like, the next morning, I'm like, oh, I got class in there. I want to see how much work I can get done before I can go over there and look at my marbles and dust them off and go take pictures of them or whatever. Anyway, um, great to see you all, and I hope you enjoy the demo. I will be back next Wednesday, and I will post pictures of what we did tonight, tomorrow. All right, see you later. Bye.